We've been looking at ethics so far, and now it's time to transition from ethics uh, into the business law aspect uh, of the program. But to do that, we've got to spend a little bit of time getting some foundation um, stones in place. And those foundation stones are about understanding our legal system. How do we get the law that we've got? Um, because if we can't understand that, it becomes very difficult to understand why the law is what it is and actually what the law is. And probably more importantly, how the law might change, because that's what we've got to do when we plan for business. We've got to think how are things going to be regulated? What does the law say uh, about this particular topic or aspect of the law? So that's why we're going to spend um, the next quite substantial amount of time in terms of volume of topics uh, and also uh, a, couple of, uh, a couple of weeks looking at the actual legal system. Before we talk about the legal system, though, it is worth just briefly recapping, you know, what is law and how is it different from, say, ethics? So let's... Our first point is that um, law is a specific kind of rules, right? You might think of law as rules, and sometimes uh, we even think about um, rules and we call it law in a different context, um, like the laws of a sport, the laws of rugby. But are they really laws? So, well, not for our definition, because there are three requirements for a law. Um, the first requirement is that they're rules. So they need to be rules, but not all rules are law. Okay, so what differentiates law from, say, rules? You can have rules uh, at home. Your family could have rules. Uh, sports have rules. Um, games have rules. There's, 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 lots of things have rules. The university has rules. Um, lots of things have rules, right? But these are rules that then can be, that, that are made by the state. Okay, so that's really important. So it's the, the, the state or the nation that we're in makes these rules, not the governing body of a sport, not your family, etc. It's made, in, in other words, by our society. So they're rules made by the state. Not only that, but they're enforceable. Okay, so these kind of enforceable rules are things that can be uh, prosecuted uh, and or litigated. Okay, so they're the three things we're looking for for a law. We need to make sure that they're rules um, made by the state and that they're enforceable um, by litigation um, or prosecution by the state. And then we can see that really business law is, is just then applying the term business to that. So business law is the set of rules regulating businesses and business activities. Again, it's made by the state and enforceable by prosecution or litigation. Good law has four key attributes. Okay. So not all law is good, and this is why we often get this potential clash between ethics and the law, right? What do we do when we think a law is unfair? What's the ethical thing to do? Well, hopefully, most law that we see will be fair. What fairness is, is a really complex topic, right? That's what we did in week three, talking about justice. But, you know, one of the things we'd hope is that we treat people the same way under the law, right? That's fair. That's equality in terms of justice. So we want laws that are fair, and there can be different attributes of that fairness. Uh, a second thing that we want is we want certainty, right? You don't want someone changing the law every week. You can't plan business. You can't plan your life if there are these rapid changes or you're just not certain what the law might be. So we want certain certainty in the law. We want to know what it is. And we also kind of want some consistency uh, in that law so that we can plan and have a robust and stable society. So we want fairness. We want certainty. We also need to know or to be able to find out what the actual law is. So the good law needs to be accessible. Finally, you know, we, we've seen in the last few years, you take, for instance, the, uh, the, the issue of Uber going on at the moment. Um, technology changes, the world changes, society changes. So the law needs to be flexible. It needs to be able to move with these changes. And when the law is lagging changes, be they technological or 
in uh, ethical areas. Say so some would argue that marriage equality is one of those areas um, where maybe uh, the law hasn't kept up with social norms. If we if we uh, believe the polling, well, then the law um, hasn't had the flexibility in it at the moment to to reach those areas. So we need flexibility. Now, notice these areas can be in tension, particularly this area of certainty and flexibility. There is a tension between making sure that we know what the law is and keeping this consistency with also ensuring that there's enough flexibility in the system. But in an ideal world, the law will have these attributes, certainty, flexibility, accessibility, and fairness. If it has those attributes, then then a lot of benefits flow through to the society that we actually live in. We've got some listed here on this slide, um, but feel free to think about some more attributes of positive law. You know, the rule of law and having good law is a bedrock to people's happiness, to society, to prosperity and flourishing. And uh, there's lots of great benefits that flow when we have good laws. Now, of course, as we were talking, good law needs to be flexible, which then means that it needs to be able to change. There's lots of reasons why laws can change. We've got a few listed here, particularly um, as they pertain to business, right? You can have lobby groups who try and get change. Technology might force a change in the law. Um, you know, even something as simple as copyright, as uh, photocopying, you know, it really starts to substantially change um, how easy it is to make a copy of something. So then do we need to recognize that in copyright? The internet has caused all kinds of challenges around intellectual property, etc. cetera. Um, there can, of course, be general change in community values. We can see problems in an existing law and then try to fix them. Or even, in fact, we might see some political change leading to changes in the law. There's, of course, many other examples that I'm sure you can think of, but our law is always subject to change. So to understand how we do that change, we really do have to understand how laws are actually made and how our legal system um, gels together. I hope you can see that it's just not from a societal perspective we need to understand law. We also need to understand it from a business perspective. There's a uh, a great many businesses that are actually built on understanding the law better than, better than others. And we can go through that um, in some of our class discussion. Laws uh, allow certain industries to flourish or to wither away. A great example, again, I'll go, uh, is where the law provides a monopoly to a particular area. And we've seen that over and over in, in Australia, from industries such as the taxi, in, taxi industry through to Telstra when it was the old Postmasters General, etc., cetera, um, through to electricity grids, etc. There are certain industries that have monopolies that are regulated in a certain way. The law around competition policy um, affects business. There are so many ways that the law intersects with business and why it's critical to the for our understanding of how to build an effective and successful organization. So that's an introduction to kind of what law is and why it might be important. Next, we're gonna have a look at some different kinds of law. You know, what actually is the subject matter of law? So that's in our next one.